Queen Elizabeth II has passed away at the age of 96 after being Britain's longest reigning monarch, having sat as queen since 1952. A few moments ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. All parliamentary activity will be suspended for 10 days for a period of mourning. The Queen reigned for seven decades. <laughs> Her passing has sent a shock around the world after her 70-year reign because about 86% of Britons surveyed were satisfied with the way that the Queen was doing her job, and her strong approval rating ranked her as one of the most admired women in the world. Along with Queen Elizabeth's top-notch public brand, she also held an insanely impressive and historically significant portfolio of properties both personally and through the Royal Trust, and Forbes has estimated the value of this real estate portfolio to be north of $28 billion in total. This is not a history channel, and I'm definitely not qualified to talk about the inner workings and politics of the royal family. Instead, we're just going to take a look at some of the amazing properties that Queen Elizabeth II either owned or controlled at the time of her passing. The first property on our list today is probably the most recognizable of the bunch. That is the Buckingham Palace in London, and this home has an estimated value of $4.9 nine billion dollars. Kind of makes these mega mansions in LA seem like chump change. This incredible royal residence was built in 1703. It has over 830,000 square feet of interior space and it measures a whopping 355 feet across which is 108 meters and then 390 feet or 120 meters deep. The palace has 775 rooms in total including 240 bedrooms, 78 bathrooms, 92 offices, plus a movie theater, a swimming pool, and the palace even has its own post office and surgery center. Now, I need to mention that the Buckingham Palace, along with a couple other properties on our list today, have kind of a confusing ownership structure. A lot of these properties are held in a trust for future generations, so they're not the private property of the queen, meaning she doesn't personally have the right to sell the estates, but the way that this trust is written also says that the queen is technically the owner of these properties by virtue of being the monarch. Either way, no matter who you consider the owner of a place like the Buckingham Palace, the tradition says that it will always be passed down to future generations and that nobody will sell it. The main material used to build Buckingham Palace was a unique type of limestone called oolitic limestone. The architecture is considered a neoclassical style that started back in the mid 18th 18th century, and the palace sits on a whopping 39 acres of land. Buckingham Palace was Queen Elizabeth's official residence in London, and it is home to a slew of public and royalty events, with an estimated 50,000 people visiting the palace every year as guests. Next up, we've got the Kensington Palace. This is another royal residence in London that was owned by the Queen, but controlled by the Trust, and the estimated value of this property is $630 million. The Kensington Palace is sitting in the Kensington Gardens in the Royal Bureau of Kensington, which is a beautiful and lush part of London with acres and acres of gardens, a couple of ponds, and also houses a Princess Diana Memorial Fountain. The palace is another royal family residence. This one was built back in 1605 and then expanded in 1689. And nowadays it actually contains a bunch of public and private apartments within the building and the grounds. This place is huge with a total of 547 rooms and is pretty popularly known as the former home of Princess Diana and Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The biggest batch of real estate holdings for Queen Elizabeth II is lumped into an entity known as the Crown Estate. The Crown Estate is a massive portfolio. It's valued alone at around $19.5 billion as of 2021, according to Forbes. And see, again, I'm no expert in the way that the royal family business operations are structured, but from every source that I can find, the Crown Estate is owned by whoever the reigning monarch is at the time, who for the past 70 years has been Queen Elizabeth II. The Crown Estate is a massive collection of real estate, including castles, urban properties, land, retail properties, residential properties, the foreshore, parks, farmhouses, you name it. It's also a massive source of income for the royal family, bringing in about 475 million in profits per year, 
25% of those profits, which goes to the royal family, with the other 75% going to the British Treasury. What's confusing about the Crown Estate is that it's considered the sovereign's public estate, which means that it's not government property or part of the reigning monarch's private portfolio. So even though Queen Elizabeth may have owned the Crown Estate while she was in power, this is another one where technically she didn't have the rights to sell any of it. Reviewing the official Crown Estate website, it says that they have dated back 260 years and the Crown Estate is a unique business with a diverse portfolio that stretches across the country. It says they are the largest property owner in London's West End and they have over 10 million square feet of property in total in their portfolio. To put it super simply, the Crown Estate is a company that employs 450 people and has a massive real estate holdings portfolio. They make money from that real estate portfolio, then they take that money and use it to pay people like the Queen, the royal family, and do good for the community. I pulled up their most recent financial statements and the Crown Estate has $16.5 billion in total net assets with 15.6 billion of those assets being held in various properties. And the operation seems to be doing quite well as we exit the years of the pandemic with their net revenue growing over 10% year over year. I found some controversy around where all the money was moving around with the relation to the Crown Estate because on one hand, they do contribute billions of pounds to the UK economy every year. But on the other hand, they do cost the UK taxpayers somewhere in the tens of millions of pounds range. The list of real estate holdings of the Royal Empire as a whole and controlled by Queen Elizabeth II seems to never end. You've got the Duchy of Cornwall, which is another portfolio of holdings valued at $1.3 billion. There's the Duchy of Lancaster, which is valued at $748 million. And then there's the Crown Estate of Scotland, which has a value of around $592 million. Even though the Queen technically didn't have the right to sell any of this property for a profit due to its ties to the royal family, she still amassed a pretty impressive real estate portfolio and net worth herself. The Queen's net worth was estimated to have been around $500 million as of the last report, which included art, jewelry, and real estate. One of those real estate holdings was the Sandringham House, which was a private country home of Queen Elizabeth II's located in Norfolk, England and sitting on over 20,000 acres of land. Sandringham is another one that's hard to value, but most estimates say it's worth somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 million bucks. The estate has its own website, which is temporarily shut down in the morning of the Queen, but the home is said to be a full working farm employing around 200 people. And even though it's a private estate where the Queen spent time, held parties, and hosted Christmas, it's actually also open to the public, just like the Buckingham Palace. You can go there and tour the grounds and the museum on site. Along with the Sandringham Estate, the Balmoral Castle was another large estate house owned by Queen Elizabeth II herself. This one is located in Scotland. This amazing home was built in 1856. It sits on an insane 50,000 acres. And what's cool is I read that this place really serves as a retreat for the royal family to enjoy a simpler life. They spend time here exploring the grounds, on picnics, walking dogs, grilling, and riding horses. The Barmoral Castle is loaded with plenty of living space, a library, lots of room for staff, it's been described as the most beautiful place in the world. And this is where Queen Elizabeth II passed away peacefully this past Thursday, September 8th. Queen Elizabeth II's son, King Charles, has made a statement on the royal family's Twitter account honoring his mother. He said, the death of my beloved mother, Her Majesty the Queen, is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family. We mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign and a much loved mother. I know her loss will be deeply felt throughout the country, the realms, and the commonwealth, and by countless people around the world. During this period of mourning and change, my family and I will be comforted and sustained by our knowledge of the respect and deep affection in which the queen was so widely held. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong.